Hi, I'm Kanu Behel and I'm here at the Director's Fortnight with my film Agra. And uh, this is my second feature. The first feature was uh, at A Certain Riga in 2014. And uh, Agra is a film about sexuality and sexual repression. And uh, it, it tries to contextualize sexuality in the context of the physical spaces that we live in. And it speaks about how sexuality affects our physical spaces and our physical spaces in turn, how they end up molding our sexuality. And I think this is especially pertinent in the modern context in which we live in, in India, because uh, as you know, India is now one of the two most populous countries in the world. It probably is going to be the most populous by next year or so. Um, but where I think we are very unique and different is that China has a huge landmass and we are so many people crunched into such little uh, space and everything is just going vertical. So I wanted to find a larger context for sexuality and sexual repression and wanted to contrast the two and bring them together and play with that. And I think that's the ballpark that uh, Agra functions in. Yeah, I think that's a very interesting question because um, Agra uh, um, internationally is known most for the Taj Mahal, uh, one of the seven wonders of the world. But what uh, not many people outside of India know, and it's a very immediate connection in India actually, is that Agra at some point was also the home for the largest mental asylum in the country till about three years back. Now there's another mental asylum that's bigger. But as soon as you mention the word Agra in India, they say Agra ka pagal khana, which means the mental asylum of Agra. So it's that common, you know. So when I was writing the film, I immediately wanted to make that connection with an audience. Uh, also because I think that uh, the madness, the noise, the chaos, and, and here I want to differentiate the madness from uh, mental illness. I'm really, I, I don't want to, I'm not talking about the mental illness, but the madness, the noise, the chaos that comes with this, this sexual storm that is within the house in Agra, uh, that, that house I almost wanted to represent as a microcosm of the larger macrocosm. And that's why I really wanted to call it Agra. Absolutely, I, I think so. I mean, it has to be. Cinema, anyway, as an art form, has such power that uh, it, can, it can reach out to such a large mass of people. And it is, it is just such a, uh, a community experience. I mean, at the end of the day, the way cinema was built for, for was, was to be consumed in dark theatres with a bunch of people coming together and sitting together. And I think as soon as you go into that darkened space inside a cinema hall, you, you enter almost like a dream state and it is your time with yourself, even though there's someone sitting next to you. But you enter a space where you are just looking at yourself. And of course the identification is there because uh, if you see a character that, is, that comes as, clo as close uh, to being as flawed as you are somewhere deep inside, it's only then that the dream state is fully, uh, fully realized. And, and I think it, 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 it sort of functions from there. So if you're not uh, functioning with a set of characters that come close to who you really think you are deep down inside, you don't express it ever to yourself maybe when you wake up in the morning, but you know who you are and those, those secret dark spaces within you. I think if you don't feel that space getting hit with, with your interaction with, with the characters, then you're, you don't really buy into the film, so yeah. Absolutely, yes. Uh, see, I, I always knew it's going to be a difficult film to watch. And uh, n a, a normal audience and everyday audience uh, also comes from their daily battle for that they're fighting in their lives and to suddenly ask someone to enter this world and stay with you for two hours uh, is a big ask especially if the if you're taking them into a film that is not quite what they're used to usually watching so the first scene 
for me was also a premonition and 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 in a sense a, a call out to the audience that this is what you're getting into if you want to step out and if you're not ready for what's coming now is the time to step out or or i mean if you're ready for this this is it so with the first scene immediately apart from obviously the 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 symbolic nature of the bestiality and you know the the squirrel that you see and what happens within the scene just in terms of where that scene takes you right in the beginning i really wanted to start that conversation already with the audience and say you know we are going to some difficult spaces be ready and if you're not this is the time so so that that specifically as far as the first half of the film goes i think when i started writing the film i thought uh will i be honest to guru do i even know guru personally as well as 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 i think i do because again i'll be really honest i come from a slightly middle class background and i had all said and done i had grown up in a three bedroom house and of course it had problems i had a big family within the three bedroom house but i was slightly more privileged than guru was and uh, i sat down to write and i was saying do i even know him and how do i come close to feeling because I, if i have felt the sexual repression to 5 out of 10 Guru is already feeling it at ten. So how do I go to ten? How do I how do I even get there? The more I, nervous I got, I I then decided even before I start writing, I'm going to put myself in that position and I'm going to find ways to feel ten. You know, get up to ten. So I did many things. I I put myself sometimes in very difficult situations. I tried to stay safe as much as possible for myself and for other people. But I'll give you a small example. I. you know for 5 or 6 months i actually went to sex sex chat uh, rooms myself and i spent a long time in sex chat rooms sometimes posing as women sometimes posing as random men sometimes posing as myself and i tried to feel more and more and more and more what guru was feeling and the more i felt that you know i felt something very specific uh, which is that when you are in this big a sexual storm uh the 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 relationship between your public so everybody has a public sec, uh, a private and a secret persona when you feel repressed sexually to this extent i think the the bridge between your public and your your secret persona breaks completely and the private goes for a toss you have no private life left it's only your public persona that feeds the secret persona and the the secret persona keeps on wanting more and more and more and so that that feeling when i got close to that feeling i knew that if this film had to truly talk about sexual repression you had to feel this break and this uh, this storm this anger this frustration at the level that he is feeling because inside guru's head is just noise he is just wants to come he, he you know and and i wanted to play it from there so that journey to me as difficult as it is to prepare you for what is to come the calmness that is to come once he starts to mature i i mean it's a reverse coming of age for me so whatever that maturity is it's in many ways it's a giving up also he gives up on on his rebellion but in his own immature rebellion if you had to feel the truth with all the noise all the chaos then that's how the first hour had to be it cannot be anything anything else if you if you really want to feel the truth of the second half of the film no so you know uh, uh, i kind of not to this extent uh, agra takes almost three steps forward but i kind of faced this with my first film also titli where people felt oh it's a little too difficult and characters are detestable nothing as compared to agra but uh, you know it's 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 something that uh, i just don't uh, burden myself with i think if you're finding a character uh, difficult and detestable i think the onus to be able to live with that character lies completely with the audience because if you've done your job with complete truth and complete honesty and you're reflecting a character that is either you or you've seen around you then that character exists and i i approach all my characters within my film with the belief that 
they all live within me and i felt them in many ways with some sort of honesty which means that they are out there in the world so if we are talking about people that exist all around us and if you're watching people that exist all around you and you're finding them difficult i think it's a conversation that you need to have with yourself i think it's a conversation that the audience needs to have with themselves and and if they are not ready to have that conversation if they are not ready to watch the film and they are walking out or or whatever i think to me that reflects uh, a lot on their ability to be with themselves so it actually you know uh, uh, sometimes when people walk out of my films that's a very good clue when i watch the faces to see how much that person can be with themselves and at what point it got too difficult and they just don't want to go down there so yeah to answer your question i never go there i i i'm i'm not i'm not responsible if if you find it difficult well go out in in the society and make a change and and make sure these people disappear ah <sighs> uh you're making me pick sides ah <laughs> uh, that's a very difficult question you know uh but if i had to pick i would say he's a victim yeah i i feel for him as difficult as a a, a character as he is uh as as dastardly the things that he does i find them very difficult to accept but i think i understand where they come from uh i think he lives in such a deeply patriarchal context and i think it's it's so curious that in patriarchal societies now also post me to post the me to movement uh, anyway it was very difficult because in patriarchal societies there is a very specific demand from you as a man to exist like a man and it's very difficult to live up to that it's not often recognized uh, because men are obviously more physically powerful and they cope with their lives in an apparently more successful way purely because of the physicality so it's not addressed often and and so what i was saying was anyway in patriarchal societies it's hard to talk about what a man is really feeling and post me to i think it's even become harder uh so yeah so i think a lot of what men feel now is so repressed within them that it's a conversation that even they are not having with themselves so in that sort of a situation i mean i feel like if we are going to be able to stop any sort of uh, unacceptable behavior towards the opposite sex and to be truly able to have the hope to get rid of the perpetrators of male perpetrators uh, then we've got to understand them from the inside and if we are not going to understand their repressions and if we are not going to talk about them then we are never going to be really able to get rid of uh, of of those kind of men and the me too movement or any movement that is associated with the emancipation of women and a and a, and a more equal role for them uh, will never be successful you know so in that sense i think combining there with the innocence that you say uh for guru because also young men are still forming themselves you know he is at a age where he still is doesn't know who he is completely and he's finding out and while he's in the process of finding out if again as i say i do not condone what he says uh it's very difficult it's unacceptable at sometimes what he does but still within that if we don't try to understand what he's feeling while he's on this journey then we are never really going to be able to get rid of guru if if we want to get rid of guru at at some point we are never going to be able to get rid of him and to a large extent the problem is the patriarchal structure and the larger socio political cultural context within which a human being is brought up so yeah it is it is a it is a coming of age it is a it's somewhere also uh, you know it coincides with the death of a patriarch his father you see the decay and the irrelevance of a patriarch and somehow it coincides with the rise of a new patriarch except this new patriarch is 
slightly more sensitive. He's at least aware of his repressions. And I think that's, that's why maybe the film takes this battle for awareness within men a step forward. At least Guru is aware. At least he tried to fight and he lost. But uh, maybe he will try to fight again after a few years. Uh, or maybe not. Who knows? But at least there is awareness uh, by the end of it. We were really lucky to f to find him. We actually found him in the second week of the auditions. Uh, even though we were looking in five different cities and we are greedy always as filmmakers and as crew and we kept on looking. So I was looking for four months. But eventually we, we realized that we had guru the, the guru that we'd found in the second week. So the way I usually work is I do a three month long workshop before the film. And in the first month of the workshop, I have three options for each character. So in the first month, we had three gurus because we also try to put the cast together and see who, who sort of spiritually belongs with who. And, and we are doing some, some uh, exercises within that. So I had three gurus, but eventually, you know, what really worked for Mohit was that I always felt that it's such a difficult part and he's going to do things that are going to be unacceptable, that physically we needed an actor who was not very imposing and uh, we needed a certain innocence. We needed a certain ability to want to stay or at least have the hope to be, 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 be with this boy. And so, yeah, I think even though we had three very good actors, but Mohit, his physicality, his presence, his innocence, that played a huge part in, in us wanting to, wanting to go with him eventually. And as far as prepping for the part goes, you're absolutely right. When we met him, this was one of our fears actually before we decided was that he is the complete opposite of, of, of Guru in, the, in real life. Uh, he's quite a charmer, he's good with women. And, and so I try to set up my actors to be very independent while we are shooting because I feel like also when you're with an actor on set, it's only them who know the truth of the moment. And there's only the little tweaking you can do outside as a, as a director and say, okay, maybe don't do this, maybe don't do that. So I feel my primary job is before the film begins. So that, that two, two and a half, three month period that we spent with Guru, I think that's where together me and Mohit started forming Guru. And that's where the real work was, where we did a bunch of exercises, you know. Uh, so obviously the first process was ask him not to have sex at all to be able to feel it, uh, feel what it is or come as close to it as possible. So for the period of the film, he didn't have sex at all. And, and a lot of exercises to be able to create the noise uh, within Guru's head. So, you know, there was, there was some silly things that we did, like we made a 30 minute noise video, just white noise for him. And he was watching it first thing in the morning when he wakes up and last thing before he, before he sleeps at night. And then obviously there are, there's a whole process to creating the character. I'm not sure how we can, whether we can go into, into it right now, but there's a step-by-step -step process of first cleaning out Mohit from, from, from him, Mohit, the human being who's brought in. So the first month is completely about cleaning out Mohit. The second month is what I call neutral, where you just uh, explore the rhythms of, of who Guru is without getting into the script. I actually never get into the script, but you explore his body rhythms and you slowly build the rhythms of the character within him. And then the last uh, part is what I call putting on the skin, which is again where you start doing a lot of work outside of the screenplay. So whatever is written, you, you, you try to give the character as many experiences of what the character has gone through of what we don't see in the film. So actually the, my whole workshop is not about the script at all. It is designed to make the actor feel like he knows the part, he knows Guru so that he, he has the truth in his gut on day one. And as soon as we start feel, filming, he becomes the vessel and he can honestly, he can come and tell you, no, I don't think this is what Guru is feeling. So something like that, you know.